Now let's take a look at the big picture. Sam Stovall is with us, Chief Investment Strategist at CFRA. Thank you for being with us. What did you think about NVIDIA's numbers and what we learned and how it's soaring today? Hey, Nicole, it's always a treat to be on with you. Uh, well, certainly with you, with NVIDIA's share price up almost 15% today, uh, I think there were a lot of people who were worried that the stock would only hit a solo home run rather than another grand slam. Uh, of course, what we find is that, no, NVIDIA did it once again. Uh, and so as a result, uh, we increased our target price, we maintained our buy recommendation, and we still believe that there is upside for the stock as, as well as the sector. Right, so still upside. So are you feeling bullish overall or pretty good on tech? Well, I've been feeling bullish, obviously, for a while. Uh, our year-end target is 5,200 on the S&P 500. Uh, we do have overweight recommendations on communication services, consumer discretionary, financials, and tech, which, uh, breathing a sigh of relief, those are the four uh, sectors that are leading the way today. And what we also find is that investors are not gravitating toward the safe havens of uh, utilities, consumer staples, et cetera. So our belief is that uh, we want to let the market take us where it wants to go. It's interesting because you're absolutely right. Those are the, the leading sectors today. Um, financial services, interesting how you have financials in there when we're in this higher for longer um, environment, which, you know, my dad used to love the banks. And of course, people thought the higher environment was good for the banks. Where do we stand in the financials? What do you like there? Well, I think basically that uh, even though the Fed is uh, slower to lower interest rates, uh, we think that they will cut rates at the June FOMC meeting and do so by 25 basis points and then have similar cuts in the third and fourth quarters of this year. You know, we're going to end up having the first cut later than what Wall Street is expecting right now uh, and probably fewer cuts. But still, uh, financials tend to be one of the best performers in that pause period between the last rate hike and the first rate cut. Uh, and one of the areas that we happen to favor uh, is the uh, consumer credit area, uh, in particular companies like American Express, uh, it, a very strong performer. And I think it is breathing a sigh of relief because now there are a lot of questions about the Capital One and Discovery merger. Yeah, and that's true. That's a good point um, you make. Tell me about the levels, the history of these levels. Um, this is a election year. Are you looking for a pullback, a correction, or just more to the upside? Well, I think that we are due for some sort of digestion of gains. On January 19th of this year, the S&P recovered all that it lost in the 2022 bear market. History then tells us that the market tends to advance for another couple of months, rising about 5% on average uh, before uh, digesting those gains. But the good thing is that the gains on average are only about 8%, and we've never had a decline in excess of 14%. So you Usually we get some corrective action, but we don't end up starting a new bear market. Uh, but then I would say for the full year, uh, historical precedent, you know, a positive January in an election year. If we have January and February in positive territory, both of those indicators point to a 100 percent frequency of the market being up for the entire year. Right. Understood. Um, anything else on some of the other areas here? You mentioned uh, communication services and tech, um, you know, just to name a few consumer discretionary too, right? Sure, sure. Well, I think you're, you know, looking at companies, uh, investors are saying, well, I do own some NVIDIA. Are there other areas that are likely to benefit as well? Uh, Broadcom is a stock that we have a buy recommendation on uh, that is also doing quite well oh. today, in a sense, riding the coattails yeah. of NVIDIA. Uh, and ditto for Amazon, uh, another of the behemoths, but this one in the consumer uh, discretionary category uh, that we think should do well in the year ahead. Yeah, it's interesting. So you have a buy on Broadcom and on, on Amazon. Um, when we think about Amazon, um, you know, it's not performing the way some of the other Magnificent Seven, some of the Magnificent Seven have pulled back. What do you think can drive Amazon 
higher and the customer behavior that you expect for the resiliency for 2024 that we're seeing already. Right. Well, I mean, it's a compelling and durable multi-year profit story. Uh, it has a lot of free cash flow, uh, and it was recently added to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So I think it's going to get even wider exposure. Yeah. What about um, the breakdown in um, the allocation? You know, bonds, you have foreign equities here, uh, some cash. Where do we stand on some of that? Well, basically, uh, at this point, you know, they, you don't want to really give up on your inter international exposure, uh, I think, primarily because they're trading at about a 20 percent discount to their historical relative P.E. ratio. So just like mid caps and small caps, which are very attractively priced relative to the S&P 500, uh, the real question is, is the market about to top out or broaden out? And if it broadens out, which is what we think will be happening as the year progresses, then you want to have exposure to mid and small caps, as well as to the developed international areas, because the worry about recession seems to have been sidestepped for right now. Uh, and I think we could end up seeing an improvement in international indices as investors uh, move back into that area. Yeah. And last time we spoke, you talked about this being the year of an incumbent and after you know, I don't know, you had some sort of stats, but basically it lined up to winner. Oh, exactly. I mean, history winner, is a great guide. Market investment. History is a great guide, but it's never gospel. Uh, so even though a lot of these indicators have 100 percent historical frequency of advance and very good returns, there's no guarantee that it'll repeat this time around. But uh, yeah, the, for the election year of first term presidents, average gain around 15 and a half percent, 100 percent frequency of advance. January barometer in an election year, also thumbs up um, all time highs in January and February, leading to a potential gain for February and January. Uh, just a lot of indicators out there that are saying this year could surprise investors to the upside. All right. So far, your crystal ball was on point. Sam Stovall, <laughs> great to see you. Thank you, always. Chief Investment My Strategist pleasure. at CFRA. We appreciate it, Sam. Thank you.